Hey, it's Rachel Rofe, and in this video, we're going to go over four plus actual reasons why people are not buying your products and what you can do about it fast. So this is for those of you who are either wanting to make more sales or you're starting and you just, you just don't understand why people aren't purchasing. So I'm going to be sharing my tips on how you can fix this for both Amazon and Etsy, and then stay tuned until the very end to make sure that your store doesn't make any of these mistakes. Before we begin, if you think that this is helpful or you like my other videos, please make sure to like this video and also hit the subscribe button. Uh, that's just going to help me see the type of content that you find most useful and what I should continue to work on. Okay, so the first thing here is if you are creating products and if your fonts are unreadable, that's one of the things that can really cause you to not make sales. So a lot of times I teach people just use super simple fonts that are very readable because a lot of times people are selling or buying when they're looking at a cell phone, right? They only see very small thumbnails, yet still a lot of times people try to make these intricate fonts, things like that. You want them to be big, bold, easily readable from that very small thumbnail state. You want people to be able to like get it right away. You also want to make sure the, the less kind of intricate the font, the less people are going to have a problem with it. Because if you do something with script, for example, some people don't like script or some people might say a font is too girly or they don't like a certain font. The less that you add to it, the more basic, the more it's going to be kind of mass market. And that's what we're doing with low hanging, right? We're going for a mass market. We want people to be able to just focus on the phrase itself. I'm going to be adding a link to my blog link below. So you'll get a full list of some of the fonts that are easy to read, but some that are great font choices just via text a talk right here, Georgia, Helvetica, uh, PT Sans, PT Serif, uh, Ariel, Open Sans, Quick Sand, Verdana. All of those are really great fonts. The next thing is if your designs are too fancy. So remember you wanna keep it simple here. If most of your mugs have images or uh, just are kind of like taking a lot of time per design, that's really not the low hanging way. We want to have super simple mugs with just black text, that's it. Later on you can scale up, right? After you're making sales in specific niches or something, like you make a lot of sales in let's say the nursing niche, then go ahead, try your hand at fancy. But for low hanging, we wanna throw spaghetti at the wall. And so we wanna make super simple text-based designs on mugs. Every single new element that you're adding to the mug, every single new image or picture or color, or image and picture are the same thing, every color, everything new, it gives someone a new reason not to buy it because they might not like the picture. You might have a picture of a dog and their dog's eyes are a different color than what's on the, the mug, right? So keep it simple white mug, black text, you're good to go, and then scale up later. If you check out the bestsellers, by the way, if you check out the Amazon bestsellers, you'll see that basic white mugs with black text, same thing that I always talk about, those are the ones at the top of the bestseller list. They're also the ones that I show you in the case studies for Low Hanging System if you're a member because we wanna keep it massively simple. The next thing here is that your phrases are too hard to understand. So you've gotta think because people are scrolling and they wanna be able to instantly like find something they like and purchase it. So would someone instantly understand what it is that you're selling? I say this because a lot of times when people are making designs, they try to um, think of really clever designs that um, they might be clever, but it, it might take a little bit of time for people to fully like get what it is that the joke is. You really wanna go after things that people will get that humor super fast. People have a lot of things competing for their attention when they're shopping. So as they scroll, they need to just immediately understand what it is that you're selling, what it is, what the funny joke is or sentimental or whatever it is, and uh, be able to purchase. So a lot of times I'll see people with uh, just super long phrases or intellectual humor like that you have to think about a little bit which is fine sometimes, but for this particular model, we need really fast kind of things. So keep calm and scrapbook as an example, right? Or just something that's like super easy to get within a couple seconds. The next thing to look out for is if people are actually searching for the keywords that you are making designs for. So uh, sometimes I see that people will make designs for things where people aren't searching, right? So you can come up with great phrases, but if nobody is searching for what it is that you're selling, then it's not going to be found. Even if you have the most hilarious phrase in all the land, right? 
So the way that I say to make your designs are either to make formulas, right? So like keep calm and blank, keep calm and scrapbook, basket weave, kite surf, whatever. Um, that's one. Or you can use spot niches and find designs that way too. Then there's a master list if you're inside the low-hanging system group, if it's a list of uh, niches for those of you who aren't, and that'll give you a bunch of different niches that you can get into. But you want to go after those kinds of things where people are, are searching so that you can you can make sure that you're giving them what they're saying. They have their kind of wallet out ready to spend money on, not just like think of things that don't actually have any competition. So when we're doing this, we're going to be aiming for kind of low hanging niches that, um, that people are looking for so that we can give them exactly what they want. I, I say so many times in the coaching calls, if nobody's searching for this, then it's never going to get found. Next is you're not selling enough in enough niches. So if you um, have, let's say five designs in the pit bowl niche, then to me, you only have one design. I say throw spaghetti at the wall with lots of different niches, right? So pit bull would be one, Boston Terrier, golden retriever, different uh, breeds would each be one different design because you're going to a different market, but I would never have a bunch of designs just for one market because you don't know necessarily if that's going to sell. So I recommend uh, getting into lots of different niches. If you're in low hanging, again, use that master list of different niches that you can use. And then you could always niche down. So instead of dog mugs, as an example, do Pomeranian mom or Boston Terrier dad gift or something like that. So again, we're gonna go after evergreen kind of formulas, keep calm and blank or world's best blank. Those are overused ones, but I'm giving just kind of examples. And then we're going to rinse and repeat with lots of different niches, lots of different things that people are searching for. And then we're just going for quantity here, quantity of lots of different niches. And that's the way to keep up your momentum and increase your chances of sales. The next thing is if you're not using keywords inside your titles. So keywords are how customers can find your items on Amazon and Etsy. So with the keywords, I like to keep it super simple. Just what would somebody be typing in before they found your product and ended up purchasing it? If they are, let's say in the knitting market, they'd probably search for funny knitting mug or funny knitting cup. So you would put that, those phrases inside your title and uh, just make sure that it's like your keywords that are in the title are the ones that are most likely to convert them into purchasers, right? So instead of like funny knitting gift in your title for your first few words, I would have a funny knitting mug because if someone's searching for a mug, it's a lot more likely they'll purchase your product than if they're searching for a gift. Because if they're searching gift, they might purchase yours, but they might be looking for some other kind of knitting gift. So you wanna have the most tightly relevant keywords in the very beginning of your title. Uh, you can also um, like look on Etsy, right? Go on the search engine and start typing things in and seeing what comes up in the auto-populated kind of search terms. You can use spot niches, but generally I just like to do common sense keywords. I don't put like the phrase that's on the mug or the design that you're selling. I don't put that in the title, just the most tight keywords possible that make sense to whatever it is that you're selling. So as a general thing, I say, just try to keep it super simple, right? You don't get over innovative with lots of new fonts and designs and all this super simple black text, white mug. I know a lot of Etsy sellers like to do kind of more intricate, but even, I mean, I've made over 25,000 sales on Etsy at this point, just keeping it simple. I mean, of course I scale up later, but I started off with simple and just went into uh, lots of niches where there just wasn't that much competition, right? Using the low hanging model. So we want very simple. We don't want to get over innovative. If you want to spend 10 to 20% of your time getting creative and experimenting, fine. But I would take the bulk majority of your time and do it on tried and true methods that uh, we know work. Please feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. If you have other videos you'd like me to make, please let me know that too. And again, please feel free to subscribe if you like this video. Hit like, helps me see the kind of content you like. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.